couple minutes. Uh, but first, I want to welcome in my guest, Mike Ferguson from the Show Me Institute. Mike, how you doing? I'm well, well. It's good, Friday. Good. I'm in, I'm in uh, good spirits. Uh, you know, we had to Brenda Talon on last yeah. week. She was telling us about this um, forum you had coming up with a speaker talking about uh, the the free speech on campus or the lack thereof that mm-hmm. we see these days. Yeah, and that was uh, we had a great response on that. Over 300 people came out. Oh, good. And uh, it was a fantastic <clears throat> conversation because there was a that day there was a new. There was a new survey of college students that was released on what are their what's their mindset on free speech. And there's about to be another one from the Cato Institute to be released where they surveyed Republicans and Democrats. Mark, we're losing the whole concept of why we have a First Amendment and why free speech is really important. It's not just so somebody can be a jerk and put a sign up. I mean, it's really bigger than that. It is bigger than that. And I guess one, whenever you talk about this, one thing you have to look at is how – how the campuses have yeah. responded. I mean, how the administration has responded around the country. And, and, and the faculty, too. The, well, the faculty, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Melissa Click's a good example of that, but she only happened to be one high-profile example of it, and she ended up losing her job over what she did. But but the bigger issue is at Berkeley and some of these other campuses where they're, I mean, you know, they, they come out and talk a good game, but their, their actions tell the truth. They didn't want Milo Yiannopoulos to be there. They didn't want Shapiro to be there. Uh, they did everything they could to prevent them from speaking. In a couple of cases, the speeches went on anyway, but mm-hmm. you could tell they weren't happy about no, it. No, and in, in Berkeley's case, you had actual violence and rioting and and a almost almost uh, paramilitary kind of, I don't want to, I mean, kind of, I mean, Antifa had ranks and they had, you know, they had strategy and they had, and uh, they had, uh, they had an approach and a plan to physically stop somebody from speaking. So yeah, it, it's, and that means that eventually what's happening is, is increasing number of colleges are saying, you know what, if we think there's going to be protest, if we think there's going to be violence, we're just not going to invite those people out, which is the opposite of how they should be responding. What they should be saying is, no, this is the place of all the places in the country where multiple viewpoints should be welcome. If you don't like what somebody says, if you don't like what Milo says, if you don't like what Ben Shapiro says, if you don't like what you know Charles Murray says or David French says or whoever, then bring in your own speaker, rebut it, make a better argument, and win over the hearts and minds of somebody else. But we can't lose kind of the spirit of the First Amendment. We can't lose the culture of free speech because if we do lose that, Mark, we're going to lose the First Amendment and the Constitution. It's I, just a matter of time. I agree. See, my my where I thought you were going with that is if you don't like what Milo's saying, if you don't like what Ben's going, stay the hell away. Well, that too, yeah. You know, besides, stand outside with a sign. Right. But what you can't do is is wear a black mask and all black clothing and start fires and, and throw things through windows. Right. And college campus administrators can't stand back and allow that to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what we're saying is uh, they want to appease one side. Right. And when you appease it, you empower it. And we're seeing that in a variety of cases around the around the area and around the country but when you appease it you empower it and what that's doing is we already have intellectually a lopsided representation of the left versus the right and i don't think anybody disagrees with that there's just far more leftist thinking on college university campuses than there are conservatives so you know david french made a really interesting point he said so if there's going to be reform if if this is going to change culturally it's going to have to come from the left on the campus and uh, there's a, there are a few speakers going, whoa, this is getting out of hand. This is dangerous. But at the same time, it's going to be on us to make the case for not the law, not the Supreme Court, but to say this is why free speech is important. And that means I'm going to have to sometimes defend the right of somebody who completely disagrees with me, who's completely nuts to peacefully say what they want to say, and the operative word being peacefully. Being peacefully, yeah. Peacefully. If the, the definition of a safe space yeah. should be a college campus where you can go listen to a speech of somebody that your friend may think is completely whacked out, but you yeah. have the right to go listen to them if you want to. And, right. and, you know, I don't know if you paid attention to this story earlier this week, but the Public Safety Committee for the Board of Aldermen mm-hmm. held a meeting where right. all of these protesters came and were screaming about police abuse and all that. And afterwards, somebody said, well, why weren't the why wasn't the police chief invited to this? And they're like, well, 
these protesters needed a safe space away from police where they could come and express themselves. Well, they expressed themselves, but there was no listening by anybody being done. And can somebody please tell me what was accomplished by using a heckler's veto and shutting somebody down yeah. and not allowing people to address and converse and exchange ideas or at least listen. Can somebody explain to me what was actually accomplished by all that nonsense? Was there any discussion by Mr. French or anyone else of um, bringing some pressure on these public, particularly the public universities, that, listen, you're not going to operate like this. We control your funding, and if you're going to shut down free speech on campus— you're not going to get as much money next year. Somebody he, could do that. Yeah, they could. He he didn't go into that specifically just because of just the conversation didn't, didn't go, go there. there. Mm-hmm. But he did make a distinction between public universities and private universities. And listen, if a private university wants to brand itself as uber liberal Oberlin College or something like that versus yeah. very, very conservative like Hillsdale or Bob Jones or something like that, they have the right to do that. And they have the right to pick and choose who they bring on. He did point out, and I completely agree, if you are a public university and you've got a process for groups to invite people to speak on your campus, you do have a responsibility and there should be consequences if you engage in what the Supreme Court calls viewpoint discrimination, meaning this speaker can come and make their presentation and try to win you over intellectually, but this one cannot because they might try to do the same thing. Yeah, and we just don't point. like that one. Can, is there a place on the website where people can go to learn more about this? Yeah, showmeinstitute.org, yeah. and you'll see um, you know, our – we're, within uh, probably the next uh, business day or so, we're going to have David French's presentation up on our website. Excellent. We're just, yeah, we're processing it through the whole video stuff. So sure. it might be up today. It's probably going to be closer to Monday. But it's really, really fascinating because he spent less time talking about the actual Constitution and about the law and more about saying, folks, this is about – who we are in our culture and whether or not we really value what we say we value. You know, I, uh, before I let you go, I know yeah. you lived in Kansas City for a while, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a legislator from Kirksville who wants the state to take a look at how they spend money to support yeah. the NFL. And of course, the Chiefs are the only game in town now, right? Oh, They're yeah. the only ones left. Yeah. I wonder how folks are feeling about that on that side of the state. You're talking about Nate Walker. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, he's a Republican from Kirksville, northeast part of the state. Uh, I know Nate. And, <laughs> you know, it, here's the thing, my take, and this is just my take on this. I'm not even sure David would, I and I would totally agree on it. I think this is a case study in the market punishing the business. Because if you want to be mad at the players, be mad at the players. But the fact of the matter is they're on their boss's clock. Right. So you also want to look at the head coach, the general manager, the team owner, and the NFL themselves because they're a private business. I mean, you know, my workplace could tell me, you know, you can't wear that. You can wear that. You will not be disruptive like that. You can have your views, but you can't do that here because I'm in the workplace. Right. Same thing with these football players. If you don't like them, do they have a right to to kneel and, and make their statement? Sure. If they're on the clock, that right is contingent on their bosses telling them it's okay. So if you want to get mad at the players, go ahead, but also get mad at the go ahead and get mad at the owners too. Sure, and, sure. And you see the ratings and the revenue way down for the Wait, NFL right now. They're filling the pinch. Yes, there's they are. no doubt about yeah. it. Uh, Mike Ferguson, thanks for your time. Go to showmeinstitute.org to read more on uh, th- this whole issue of free speech on campuses. Plus, you'll have the David French interview up there, and people can watch it soon. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Appreciate that. 314-969-9797. I'll get to your phone calls. I'm going to play you a little more from this uh, Joe Lombardo, the sheriff out in uh, in Las Vegas. He was heated today on, on some of the conspiracy theories rolling around about this Las Vegas shooting. And up next, uh, we're going to talk.